Okay, let's go find the Undoubtedly, the cast of Grease brought incredible chemistry and energy during filming, contributing to the movie's remarkable global success. With a production budget of just $6 million, it has grossed over $400 million since its release. This timeless classic continues to live in the hearts of fans everywhere. While many cast members have gone on to thriving careers, some are sadly no longer with us. As we move forward, let's take a moment to remember those beloved actors who passed away before 2024. Well, well is she taking you to the dance? Well, that all depends. Olivia Newton-John, a well-known singer in the early 70s, transitioned to acting in the movie Grease as Sandy, thanks to John Travolta's campaign for her inclusion. Her portrayal of an Australian immigrant in the film propelled her to superstardom, showcasing her singing and acting talents. The iconic song Hopelessly Devoted to You was written specifically for her. After Grease, Olivia starred in other movie musicals like Xanadu, achieving further success in her music career. Despite her fame, Olivia dedicated time to charitable work, founding the Olivia Newton John Foundation for Cancer Research. In a heartbreaking turn, it was revealed in 2022 that she battled breast cancer for 30 years before passing on August 8, 2022. Her co-star John Travolta penned a touching tribute, expressing their enduring bond. In the movie Grease, Jeff Conaway made a significant shift from his previous role in the Broadway production. He originally portrayed Danny Zuko, but handed over the part to John Travolta for the film adaptation. Instead, Conaway took on the character of Kenneke, Danny's closest friend, and a member of the Greaser gang. Additionally, he became the love interest of Betty Rizzo, played by Stockard Channing, one of the Pink Ladies. Conaway recalled a specific scene where he requested Danny to serve as his best man, the two shared a moment of closeness, ending in a hug. When asked about it, Conaway explained, We hug, what do you mean? We hug? What am I gonna do? I'm hugging for the guys who were there in the 50s, you know it didn't work. I thought, well, how are we gonna get out of that? And I thought, okay, well, they just kinda get away from each other. This interaction demonstrated their strong bond and camaraderie. The release of Grease significantly boosted Conaway's acting career. Following its success, he secured a prominent role in the television series Taxi, playing Bobby Wheeler for four seasons, which began airing in 1978. Furthermore, he pursued opportunities in various productions, including Babylon 5. It is worth noting that Conaway struggled with addiction and substance abuse throughout his life. According to him, his dependence on painkillers might have originated during the filming of Grease, when he was treated for a back injury. Regrettably, his challenges persisted beyond his career in the limelight. His family disclosed that his troubled past involved more than just his battle with substances, attributing it partly to a distressing childhood. Tragically, Conaway experienced health complications in 2011. After falling unconscious, he was placed in a medically induced coma. An autopsy later confirmed that he succumbed to pneumonia and sepsis following the termination of life support. On May 27, 2011, Jeff Conaway passed away at the age of 60. Friends. You guys. How do you like Sandy, huh? Do you think of letter in the pink ladies? In 1978, actress Susan Buckner graced the screens in the popular musical film Grease. Before earning the title of Miss Washington in 1971, Buckner had already started building her career in entertainment. After winning the pageant, she went on to become Patty Simcox in Grease, which further catapulted her into the limelight. Following her role in the movie, Buckner secured various supporting roles in productions such as The Love Boat in 1979, When the Whistle Blows in 1980, and Deadly Blessing in 1981. Not limiting herself to acting alone, Buckner expanded her resume by delving into children's theater direction in Florida during the same period. Moreover, she shared her passion for dance by becoming a dance instructor in Coral Gables. Despite being active throughout the late 70s and early 80s, Buckner eventually faded out of the public eye, focusing more on personal life than professional pursuits. Tragically, news broke out on May 2, 22, confirming that Buckner passed away peacefully while surrounded by close friends and loving family members. Although specific details regarding her demise remain undisclosed, reports indicate that she left behind a rich legacy in both films and theater. She is survived by her longtime partner Al, her sister Linda, her daughter Samantha, her son Adam Joseph, and her cherished grandchildren Oliver Riley and Ruby. According to Samantha, she was magic, and I feel incredibly fortunate to have called her my best friend. 
Indeed, the memory of Susan Buckner will forever live on through those who loved and admired her work. Before taking on the role of Principal McGee in the popular musical film Grease, Eve Arden had already made a name for herself in both film and television. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in the 1945 drama Mildred Pierce. Her work in the sitcom Our Miss Brooks earned her a Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in 1954. In addition, she starred in her own self-titled TV series, The Eve Arden Show, and appeared as herself in the beloved I Love Lucy episode of L.A. at Last Hollywood Squares Alone, and renowned comedian Paul Lyne were also considered for the part of For the Part of. Principal McGee, initially, a scene featuring Lyne donning a Carmen Miranda costume was planned, but it was ultimately Arden who brought life to the non-nonsense high school principal fixated on morning announcements. So captivating was her portrayal that she later reprised the role in the sequel, Grease 2. Regrettably, on November 12, 1990, Arden passed away at the age of 82 due to cardiac arrest caused by heart disease. Despite her absence, her legacy lives on through her memorable performances and contributions to the entertainment industry. This classic film remains a testament to her versatility as an actor, leaving audiences to wonder what other intriguing roles she might have taken on had she lived longer. Today, we remember her fondly for her wit, charm, and unforgettable presence on screen. As for Principal McGee, she will forever remain etched in our memories as a strict yet lovable figurehead, thanks largely to Arden's remarkable acting prowess. What are you, nuts? Well, no, it's just think, oh, I don't think so much. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Dodie Goodman, known for her role as Principal McGee's deputy Blanche Hodel, in both Grease and its sequel, brought a touch of musicality to the morning announcements with her xylophone. A beloved figure, she later joined the 1994 Broadway revival of this classic, taking on the character of Miss Lynch, a testament to her versatility as an actress. Before her time on set, Dodie gained ample acting experience through various mediums. She held a recurring role on the popular soap opera Mary Hartman, appeared in several episodes of Different Strokes, and even lent her talents to voice acting. With such a rich background in performance, it comes as no surprise that she made a significant impact in the entertainment industry. Throughout her career, spanning decades until her passing in 2008, Dottie remained dedicated to perfecting her craft. At age 93, she succumbed to a lengthy illness and passed away at Inglewood Hospital and Medical Center in New Jersey. Her legacy continues to resonate among fans who cherish her work in Greece and beyond. Renowned comedian Sid Caesar had a prolific career that spanned six decades, marked by numerous award nominations and a significant impact on the comedy world. Before finding fame, Caesar turned to music as a child during the Great Depression to help support his family, learning to play the saxophone. Later, he would become best known for his work in television, particularly his hit 1950s variety show Your Show of Shows, which was highly influential in its time. In the film Grease, released in 1978, Caesar took on the role of coach Vince Calhoun, tasked with turning Danny into a football star. One of the more humorous aspects of the movie, Caesar's portrayal of coach Calhoun added levity to the storyline, while also highlighting the actor's natural talent for physical comedy. However, despite his success, Caesar grappled with personal demons throughout much of his life. Struggling with addiction to both alcohol and pills, the comedian made the decision to get sober in the 1980s. This choice allowed him to enjoy a happier, healthier later years and continue working well into old age. Tragically, Sid Caesar passed away on February 12, 2014, at the age of 91, following a brief illness. His legacy lives on through his groundbreaking contributions to the world of comedy, leaving behind a body of work that continues to inspire new generations of performers today. Despite the challenges he faced, Caesar remained committed to his craft until the very end proving himself to be a true icon of the entertainment industry. In the 1978 hit musical film Grease, Dennis Stewart took on the menacing role of Leo Balmondo, the leader of the T-Bird gang, the Scorpions. That same year, Stewart landed a part in the Beatles tribute film Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Additionally, he made appearances on popular television programs like Wonder Woman, and chips. Stewart's career extended beyond acting into dance, which brought him success early on. 
His talent led him to work alongside some of the biggest names in music during the production of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Despite these opportunities, it was his portrayal of Leo Balmundo that would become one of his most memorable roles, solidifying his place in cinema history. After Grease, Stewart went on to appear in various other productions throughout the late 70s and 80s. One notable credit includes the TV series Parker Lewis Can't Lose. However, behind the scenes, personal struggles began to emerge when Stewart received news of his HIV diagnosis in 1993. After battling complications related to AIDS for over a year, Stewart passed away on April 20, 1994, at just 46 years old. At the time, he had been suffering from severe pneumonia caused by the disease. Though his life may have been cut short, Dennis Stewart left an indelible mark on audiences worldwide through his unforgettable performances in both movies and television shows alike. Reflecting back on his contributions, fans can still appreciate how much joy and excitement he brought them during his all too brief but brilliant career. So all nobody's gonna catch Grease Lightning? Yeah? Yeah! Alice Ghostly, who never thought she would make it big in acting due to her appearance, found fame as a housekeeper on the TV show Bewitched. Despite having a less than glamorous role in the 1978 movie Grease, playing Mistress Murdoch, the shop teacher at Rydell High, she approached the opportunity with determination. However, working outside under the hot sun for extended periods, while waiting for her scenes proved challenging, she recalled feeling relieved when the production wrapped up, unaware that the movie would become a cultural phenomenon. After Grease, Ghostly continued to thrive in her career, earning an Emmy nomination for her performance in Designing Women. Her talent for stage performance is shown through during her tenure in various Broadway productions throughout her lifetime, but her later years brought hardships. Losing her husband of 50 years, Felix Arati, in 2003 took its toll. Then, she faced serious health issues, suffering multiple strokes, and receiving a diagnosis of colon cancer in 2007. On September 21st of the same year, Alice Ghostly passed away at the age of 81. Released in 1978, Grease quickly became a cultural phenomenon. Audiences were captivated by the story of Danny and Sandy, two high school sweethearts navigating their way through love and life in the 1950s. This classic musical film boasted catchy tunes, memorable performances, and unforgettable fashion choices that left a lasting impression on viewers. The show resonated deeply with audiences during its time, generating buzz and excitement across various demographics. Its infectious energy transcended generations, leading to repeat viewings, sing-alongs, and countless impersonations of iconic scenes and lines. Following the success of the movie, Grease inspired several spin-offs, including a hit Broadway adaptation and numerous touring productions around the globe. These stage versions allowed new fans to discover the magic of this timeless tale, while giving devoted followers another opportunity to indulge in its nostalgia. Merchandising opportunities abounded as well capitalizing on the public's insatiable appetite for all things related to the beloved franchise. Grease-themed apparel, accessories, toys, and collectibles flooded stores, providing enthusiasts with tangible reminders of the joyous experience they shared watching the film or attending live performances. Moreover, the movie propelled some cast members into superstardom, forever etching them into Hollywood history. To this day, actors like John Travolta, and Olivia Newton-John remained synonymous with the roles they brought to life in this enchanting production. Undeniably, Grease has made a significant mark on popular culture, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and entertain new generations. Even now, almost half a century since its initial release, it remains a cherished piece of cinematic history, a testament to the power of music, romance, and coming-of-age stories set against the backdrop of bustling Americana. As we look towards the future, one thing remains clear. The spirit of Greece will endure for many years to come. The creation of the iconic film Greece in 1978 brought together a talented cast who would become synonymous with their roles. John Travolta, riding high on the success of Saturday Night Fever, was an easy choice for Danny Zuko. Producers wanted a fresh face for Sandy Olsen and discovered Australian actress Olivia Newton-John already a successful singer. Meanwhile, the search for Rizzo, leader of the Pink Ladies, led them to Stalker Channing after her memorable turn in the West Wing. Jeff Conaway, familiar from Taxi, 
landed the part of Kenneke through his existing relationship with Travolta. Auditions were held nationwide for other parts, including Diddy Khan as Frenchie following her impressive performance during callbacks. Even so, she initially tested for Marty before producers decided she fit Frenchie better. Chemistry tests played a crucial role in defining the cast dynamics. For instance, Cindy Williams and Henry Winkler were considered for the leads, but scheduling conflicts arose. Similarly, Michael Beck was up for Danny until creative differences surfaced. One pivotal moment came when Newton John expressed discomfort with singing You're the One That I Want in her natural voice, fearing it might not align with fans' expectations. However, she agreed after being reassured by Travolta and others about its fittingness for her character's transformation. These decisions shaped the final ensemble, resulting in a timeless musical beloved by generations. Some ice for number earlobes. Why don't you just let the cold water run and stick her ear under the faucet? The creation of the 1978 classic film Grease can be traced back to the unique directorial vision of Randall Kleiser. With a background in photography, Kleiser brought a fresh eye to the project. He aimed to create a stylized representation of the 1950s rather than a faithful historical depiction. This decision resulted in vibrant sets, exaggerated hairstyles, and memorable costumes that defined the look of the film. Kleiser drew inspiration from his own adolescent experiences, incorporating elements of nostalgia into the storytelling. His goal was to evoke memories of first love and teenage rebellion through the lens of musical theater. Additionally, he found influence in the visual language of rock and roll music videos, which were gaining popularity during the late 1970s. Collaboration played a key role in shaping the final product. Cast members John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John contributed significantly to their respective roles by working closely with Kleiser on character development. Meanwhile, choreographer Patricia Birch helped bring the iconic dance sequences to life, infusing them with energy and humor. The overall aesthetic of Grease reflects Kleiser's preference for warm colors and soft lighting. These choices serve to enhance both the comedic and romantic aspects of the narrative while creating a visually appealing atmosphere. Furthermore, Kleiser encouraged improvisation among actors, leading to many ad-lib lines that added authenticity and charm. Throughout production, Kleiser maintained an upbeat and inclusive environment on set, fostering creativity and camaraderie among cast and crew alike. As a result, Greece has become more than just a cinematic treasure. It stands as a testament to the power of collaboration and shared artistic vision. You wanna pay for that? Yeah, well, I'll give you 75 cents for The production of Greece, the beloved 1978 musical film, took place amidst several logistical challenges and creative decisions. The team had to build various sets, choose fitting locations, and tackle numerous production hurdles. Set design The set designers meticulously crafted vibrant, detailed settings reflective of the late 1950s California culture. Rizzo's apartment, for instance, featured floral wallpaper, vintage furniture, and a working kitchen where actors could interact realistically. Additionally, the iconic drive-in scene was shot on a massive soundstage adorned with neon lights, car hop stations, and life-sized authentic cars. Locations although primarily filmed in Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California, some exterior scenes were captured throughout Los Angeles County. Venice High School served as Rydell High, while Johnny's Coffee Shop shops on Wilshire Boulevard became Frosty Palace in the film. Producers chose these localities to evoke the classic Southern Californian atmosphere central to the storyline. Logistical challenges filming a musical presented unique complications, particularly synchronizing live singing and dancing with pre-recorded tracks. To overcome this issue, the crew used playback machines, innovative technology for the time, that allowed actors to lip-sync accurately while performing choreography. Moreover, managing large crowds proved difficult, especially during the National Bandstand dance sequence, which required careful planning and coordination. Despite obstacles, the Grease production team successfully recreated the lively spirit of the era through thoughtful set designs, clever location choices, and cutting-edge technology usage. It was so nice to me this summer. Sandy. The creation of the Grease musical score and soundtrack was a lively collaboration between composers and musicians. One of the main composers, Jim Jacobs, drew inspiration from his own high school experiences in the 1950s when writing the songs. This real-life influence helped shape the authentic feel of the music, which greatly contributed to the film's success. 
The soundtrack features catchy tunes like Grease Lightning and You're the One That I Want, both sung by John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. These upbeat numbers added energy and excitement to the movie while also conveying their characters' emotions. Interestingly, despite initial reservations about her singing abilities, Newton-John proved to be an excellent fit for the role and even had a number one hit with Hopelessly Devoted to You. Complementing these pop hits were more traditional big band style pieces performed by Frankie Valli, who sang iconic tracks like Beauty School Dropout and Look At Me, I'm Sandra D. These songs provided contrast to the contemporary sounds of the time and further emphasized the nostalgia embedded within the storyline. According to Barry Gibb, another composer involved in the project, they aimed to create a diverse range of styles that would resonate with different audiences. They achieved this goal masterfully, ensuring each song served its purpose in advancing the narrative and enhancing the overall viewing experience. As a result, the Grease soundtrack remains one of the most popular movie scores ever produced, standing out as a testament to the power of creative collaboration and musical innovation. One of the most iconic scenes in Greece is the drive-in theater scene during Sandy. As Danny serenades Sandy, we see their connection grow stronger. Director Randall Kleiser used close-ups to capture the emotion between John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Cinematographer Bill Butler utilized warm colors to create a romantic atmosphere. According to Kleiser, it was about capturing young love and creating something magical. The carnival scene where Danny and Sandy reunite after summer love stands out due to its vibrant visuals and upbeat energy. Choreographer Patricia Birch incorporated dynamic dance moves to highlight the cast talents. Meanwhile, production designer Philip M. Jeffries created a bustling environment filled with unique attractions. Travolta recounted, We all had fun working together it translated onto the screen. A memorable moment occurs when Rizzo sings There Are Worse Things I Could Do, showcasing Stockard Channing's powerful acting skills. This emotional ballad reveals her vulnerability and depth as a character. Channing mentioned, I wanted people to understand why she acted the way she did. Lighting director Bill Taylor enhanced the intimacy by dimming the lights around Rizzo. Lastly, the finale number You're the One That I Want remains etched in audiences' minds. Combining infectious music, engaging choreography, and compelling performances, it leaves viewers cheering. Producer Alan Carr aimed to go out with a bang, saying, if they don't remember anything else, they'll remember this song and dance sequence. Released in 1978, the movie Grease quickly became a sensation, captivating audiences with its lively music, engaging storyline, and charming cast. Set in the 1950s, the film follows the romantic exploits of Danny Zuko and Sandy Olsen, two high school students who meet during summer vacation and later reunite at Rydell High School. The movie's appeal lay in its ability to transport viewers to a simpler time, one filled with sock hops, drive-in movies, and youthful innocence. Its catchy soundtrack, featuring hits like Summer Nights, You're the One That I Want, and Hopelessly Devoted to You, helped cement its status as a cultural touchstone. Moreover, Greece had a significant influence on fashion trends, popularizing styles associated with the 1950s, such as leather jackets, tight jeans, and poodle skirts. The film also inspired a stage musical, which has since been performed countless times around the world. On a deeper level, Greece addressed relevant social and cultural themes of its time, including teenage rebellion, shifting gender roles, and the importance of staying true to oneself. While some criticized the film for perpetuating stereotypes, others saw it as a reflection of the era's complexities and contradictions. Overall, Greece left an indelible mark on popular culture, inspiring generations of fans, and contributing to ongoing conversations about identity, love, and self-expression. You shouldn't inhale unless you get used to it. Hey, Sandy, let me teach you how to French inhale. It's really cool. Watch. Upon its release in 1978, the musical comedy Grease was met with mixed reviews from critics, but gained widespread popularity among audiences. The film's catchy soundtrack, memorable performances, and nostalgic portrayal of 1950s high school life contributed to its success. Some reviewers praised the film's energy and entertainment value. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave it three out of four stars and wrote, it's all so cheerful and tuneful and everyone seems to be having such a good time. Vincent Camby of the New York Times called it a lively, sometimes funny, sometimes romantic, often appealing teenage musical. 
However, other critics were less enthusiastic. Pauline Kael of The New Yorker dismissed it as a trivial, synthetic product, slickly put together, yet utterly lacking in wit or originality. And Stanley Kaufman of The New Republic criticized its lack of substance and depth, writing, There isn't much here except some handsome young bodies and pleasant singing voices. Despite the mixed reviews, Grease became a massive hit at the box office, earning over $364 million worldwide and becoming one of the highest grossing films of the year. It also spawned a successful soundtrack album, which reached number one on the Billboard charts, and produced several hit singles, including You're the One That I Want, Summer Nights, and Hopelessly Devoted to You. The film's impact extended beyond its commercial success, leaving a lasting impression on popular culture and influencing subsequent musical productions. In 1979, Grease received two Academy Award nominations for Best Original Song and Best Sound. While it did not win either category, the nominations recognized the contributions of the film's cast and crew who had created a beloved piece of American cinema. The accolades and positive audience reaction meant that Greece would become a cultural touchstone, remembered fondly by generations of viewers, and inspiring numerous stage adaptations, sequels, and spin-offs. For those involved in the film, the recognition validated their efforts and solidified their place in Hollywood history. During the filming of Greece in 1978, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John hit it off instantly. This sparked rumors of a real-life romance between the two stars, which they cleverly fueled by showing up together at premieres and events. However, both have since revealed that their relationship remains strictly professional. Did you know that Jeff Conaway, who played Kenneke, was actually roommates with Travolta at the time? They lived together in a beach house while shooting the movie. According to Conaway, sharing a home with Travolta helped them build camaraderie and create authentic on-screen chemistry. The iconic song, You're the One That I Want, almost didn't happen. Originally, the plan was for Johnny Casino to perform Grease Lightning twice, once live on stage, and again later, during the carnival scene where Sandy joins him. But when producers heard the new track penned by John Farrar specifically for Sandy and Danny, they knew they had something special. So, they replaced one of the Grease Lightning performances with You're the One That I Want, much to fans' delight. Stocker Channing, who portrayed Rizzo, faced numerous challenges during production due to her alcohol addiction. Her struggle became so severe that she even passed out on set multiple times. Thankfully, after several stints in rehab post-filming, Channing managed to overcome her dependency and went on to enjoy a successful career. One fascinating trivia about the film is its unintentional tie to the satanic panic phenomenon of the late 70s and early 80s. In the original Broadway version of Grease, the character of Patty Simcox wore a sweater bearing an upside-down pentagram, a symbol often associated with Satanism. Although subtle, this detail caught parents' attention amidst growing fears of cult activity. As a result, the design was removed entirely from the movie adaptation. Remember how Danny Zuko transforms from a leather-clad greaser to a clean-cut student before the big dance? Well, according to director Randall Kleiser, this idea came directly from Elvis Presley's transformation in his 1957 film Jailhouse Rock. By showcasing these contrasting images, Kleiser aimed to highlight the duality present in many teenagers trying to fit in during high school. <laughs> Furthermore, the movie Grease left a significant mark on musical films and teen culture. Its catchy songs and lively dance sequences captured the spirit of the 1950s while appealing to a new generation. As a result, it inspired filmmakers to create more musicals that blended rock and pop music with storytelling. Many movies that followed, like Hairspray and Mamma Mia, drew on the ability of Grease to make music a central part of the narrative. Moreover, the characters in Grease, from Danny to Sandy, have become symbols of teenage romance. Their struggles with identity and acceptance resonated with audiences, influencing how young characters are portrayed in films. This exploration of youth culture encouraged future filmmakers to focus on relatable themes, making it easier for viewers to connect with the characters and their stories. In addition to movies, Greece also influenced television shows and stage productions. Many series used its themes of friendship and love, along with upbeat musical numbers, to attract viewers. The film's influence can be seen in various forms of entertainment, ensuring its place in popular culture. Certainly, 
Whenever viewers share experiences or memories about the 1978 movie Grease, it offers a unique glimpse into how this film has impacted individuals personally or shaped their views on cinema. By encouraging engagement through likes, shares, and subscriptions, we open up avenues for more cinematic explorations and discussions. Your contributions can spark conversations and create a community of shared experiences. Dick over his buddy, something gotta be wrong. You said Come on guys, let's go for a slice of pizza. Yeah.